<laughs> so we are talking about systems of equations. Where I have a set of equations and I want to look for the solution that satisfies all of them. If you're looking at the textbook, we are doing Three point four and three point six. I'm just mixing them, putting them together as one. Okay, so I'll do two examples to just sort of show how do we solve a system of equations in, a, in the basic sense. We're not uh, doing too much with it, and then we'll look at where do these things come up in a more practical setting. So for now I have two equations. In example one, 3x minus 4y equals 13. 2x plus 3y equals 3. So here's my system of equations. Now what do I mean when I want to solve these equations? I'm looking for a value for x and y so that both equations are satisfied at the same time. An x, y pair of values that is a solution to both equations. So one thing I can do, well, these look strange. I don't like how these equations are written. Let's write them in the form y equals mx plus b. Maybe they look nicer. I'm more comfortable with that form. So let's do the intermediate step. 4y equals 3x minus 13. The next one is 3y equals negative 2x plus 3. So this one becomes y equals 3 over 4x minus 13 over 4. This one becomes y equals negative 2 over 3x plus 1. Is everyone happy with that? I just like the y equals mx plus b a little bit better. What happens or what does this look like if I'm sketching these two straight lines. Well, we don't have to be too precise here. The top one has a positive slope, and it is it has a negative y-intercept, so it's going to do something like this. Let's call this line number one, line number one. The other guy has a negative slope, y-intercept of one, so if I had to guess, something like that. This is line number two. I'm just trying to visualize what's happening. What do I mean when I'm looking? These equations are all the same. This guy is the same as this guy, is the same as this one. Second one is the same as this, which is the same as this. I'm just rewriting the equation to something that looks nicer to me personally. What am I looking for when I'm looking for a solution to both equations? Well, all the points on this straight line gives me an x, y pair of values that satisfy this equation. And all of the points on this line gives me, all of the points give me pairs of values that satisfy the second equation. I'm looking for a pair of values x and y that satisfies both. So what am I looking for? I'm looking for the intersection. I'm looking for the intersection. Let's make it yellow. Intersection. What is the corresponding value for x and what is the corresponding value for y? Now what can I do? Well, if I look at those two equations in the y equals mx plus b form, the point that I'm interested in 
it has the same y value whether I'm on line two or line one. And this is how the y values are calculated. So I can find the intersection find the intersection by setting the two y values equal to each other. In other words, 3 over 4x minus 13 over 4 equals negative 2 over 3x plus 1. Now, let me say, depending on your background, there are many ways to solve a system of equations like this. This is just one way. Thinking about it graphically is definitely step one, and that's more than sufficient for us. I have some fractions here. It's not the end of the world. Let's put all the x, oops, all the x guys together, and everything else on the other side. So I get 3 over 4 plus 2 over 3x equals whatever this is. Whatever the calculator tells me that is. Doesn't matter. What do I get for x? What is the value of x? What does the calculator tell me? So we do rely on the calculator to do some arithmetic for us, otherwise it just takes a long time just to speed things up. What is the value of x? 3? Three. Three? And how do I find, okay, so let me, let me update this. x value is 3, how do I find the corresponding y value? plug it back into any of them because this point is on either is on both of the lines. So I pick my favorite, plug it in. Which one do you prefer? I like this one. Plug it in and I get the y value that corresponds to x equal to 3, negative 2 over 3 times 3 plus 1, y equals negative 1. You can take either equation. I just picked the simpler looking one, negative one. So the point that I'm interested in where the two lines intersect each other, that gives me the pair of x and y values that satisfy both of these equations at the same time. Any questions on the solution? Let's sum it up and say what the solution is. Y equal to one. Any questions on this? Yes. How did you get x equal to three? Whatever this is, I divide both sides by that and let the calculator figure it out. Right. Some number times x equals some number, so I divide by that. Just have to be careful with the fractions to put it into the calculator correctly. I'm, I did it and I'm getting a decimal. Okay, what do you get when you say 3 over 4 plus 2 over 3? 1.4? Okay, it's a lot of numbers for me. Which one is it? 1.416. 416 repeating? I'm going to get something repeat. Yeah, the 6 repeats. 6 repeats. So times x equals, what is this? 4.25. 4.25. So I get x is equal to 4.25 divided by 1.416. And just put as many 6s as you can. You are making a slight rounding error, but it should be very small. You should get, what do you get here? Put in as many sixes as you can. Then you get 
you cut it off, then yes, your answer is going to be slightly, slightly off. But it's fine if you want to cut this off, and your answer is going to be the uh, whatever two point something. It's still going to be close. Also, that's yeah. We're not being too uptight about rounding errors, but it is a factor if you want to be perfectly precise. I don't want to round off early and then use that later. But it's close. The method is what I'm interested in. Any other questions? So you may have seen this before. I don't think it's necessarily brand new information. I just want to make sure everyone is on the same page. And this method is more than sufficient for us. Of course, if you if you have more equations and more variables, then you then you enter into this algebra with matrix methods and things like that. And we're not interested in that for this course. Let's just see what else can happen with example number two. X plus two Y minus eight equals zero. 2x plus 4y plus 4 equals 0. This is my system of equations, two equations that I want to solve. Looking for the x and the y value that satisfies both of these equations together. But I don't like what this looks like, so let me rewrite each one. 2y equals negative x plus 8. The second one, 4y equals negative 2x minus 4. It's the same set of equations. I'm just making it look a little bit nicer for me. I'm not changing the equations. Sorry? Wouldn't it be easy to use x? Sorry? Wouldn't it be easy to use x? I'm trying to, yes, there's more than one way. I'm trying to be consistent, always do the same thing. It's not necessarily the absolute best because I'm going to come up with some fractions. It's not, if you're looking for the absolute shortest way, then this might not be it. But it always works. So I'm trying to just stick to one method. And because we're not getting too fancy with it, it's more than sufficient. But it's not the only way. I'm just relating it back to the y equals mx plus b so I can sketch and see what, do I, what I'm actually looking for. So I get negative 1 half x plus 4. Second one is negative 1 half x minus 1. So this is line 1 and this will be line 2. So let's see what they look like. The top one has a y-intercept of 4, slope of negative 1 half, maybe something like this. There's line 1. What does line 2 look like? Remember that the slope gives me the orientation of this line, how it's slanted. And this guy has the same slope. So they're going to be parallel. Pretend that's parallel. Because they have the same slope. The slope tells me the angle that this is slanted at. So what does that mean in terms of trying to find the solution? There's no solution because they never intersect. No solution. So for us, a graphical interpretation is more than sufficient. And solving a system of two linear equations, I'm looking for where they intersect. If they have the same slope, they don't intersect. So there's no solution. There's no x and y values that will satisfy both equations at the same time. Any questions on this? OK. So that was my two introduction examples. Where can we use this in a slightly more practical setting? Or something that actually means a little more than just having two random equations. 
So remember my supply and demand equations. So I have my quantity on the x-axis and my price on the y-axis. What did the supply curve in general look like? If my price increases, the supplier is going to give me more, so something like this. So I have my supply curve. And the demand curve, if the price goes up, the demand goes down, so I have something like this. In general. Now, they intersect at some point and for some price. This is what we call the equilibrium point, where the supply and demand balance each other out. We call this the equilibrium quantity. <coughs> quantity, and this is the equilibrium price. So when I look at supply and demand curves, the intersection has some meaning to me. It's where I'm not producing too much, I'm not producing too little, I produce exactly enough to match the demand. So there is some meaning to finding the intersection of curves or solving a system of equations. Let's look at example three. Find the equilibrium point if the supply and demand equations of a product are those two equations. So let's leave some space here. My first equation that they give me is negative 1 over 180 Q plus 12. Second equation, P equals 1 over 300 Q plus 8. Which one is the supply equation? And which one is the demand equation? Demand will be this one, you said? Does everyone agree with her? Which one does which one of these two curves does the first equation resemble? If I have a negative slope. This one. This one. Demand. Positive slope? Something like this. In our case it's a straight line, but in general it might not be. It still has that going from bottom left to top right. So this is the supply equation. OK, sure. That respectively is maybe a typo. So ignore the respectively. You're right. Which one fits which one? Negative slope? positive step. Okay. So you're right, I'll delete that respectively. And I'm looking for the equilibrium point, so I'm looking for where these two guys intersect. How do I do that? I set the two p values equal to each other and solve for q. It's easier if we always do the same method. So now I want to set negative 180, sorry, negative 1 over 180Q <laughs> plus 12 equal to 1 over 300Q plus 8. So the slight downside to my method is that we have some fractions, but if we're careful with our calculators, it's not that big a deal. So one way to do this, 
I don't like the negative, so let's take the Q to the other side, bring the 8 over, so I'll have 12 minus 8 equals 1 over 300 Q plus 1 over 180 Q. So swapping the whole thing to have my Q on the left, I have 1 over 300 plus 1 over 180 Q equals 4. What is Q equal? At this point, it's just letting the calculator do its thing. So I do want to, in comparison to, to phase one, here we are using the calculator a little bit more. I am interested in the final number there. Whether you round it a little, that's OK. 0 0.45. 0 0.45. It seems strange. Maybe you just missed a hundred or something. Looking for a quantity, a number. So a fraction might seem a little strange. 450? Yeah. Okay. So now how do I find the corresponding price? I can put it into my favorite equation. Which one do you prefer? Doesn't really matter. I'll just use the first one. Negative 1 over 180 times 450 plus 12 gives me So, the equilibrium quantity is 450 units, and the equilibrium price is $9.50 per year, per year. Just a little sentence to tie everything together. So looking for the intersection of two curves, solving two equations, this is one setting where it uh, has some practical relevance. I can sketch these briefly. We're not making a big deal about sketching the lines very accurately. But just to visualize what is happening might be a good idea. So I'm looking at my y equals mx plus b form. Makes it easy to just have a rough sketch. This one, negative slope, intersects the y-axis or the p-axis of 12. Something like that. So this will be demand. The supply curve has a positive slope, intersects at 8. Okay, so let's say that's 12. Let's say I'm exaggerating this a little bit. So let's say 8 cents over there. Something like this. And I'm looking for this intersection, which I've calculated to be at 450 and a price of 950. So if I'm able to sketch the lines perfectly accurately, then I can read this off or get close. But there's no way I can be that accurate. I want a way to calculate the, the intersection point without relying on my sketch. My sketch can just sort of confirm what I expect. My price should be between 12 and 8. 950, that yeah, seems okay. So I don't want to rely on the sketch to get me my answer. I'll use the sketch to see if my answer makes sense. Any questions on this?